Hello everyone and welcome to this video where I want to show you my process for checking mistakes, phantom physics, electrical issues and things on a creation. Now, maybe there are better or different ways to do it, but this is the procedure that I take in order to find and isolate a mistake. Now, maybe I would have preferred if the game had kind of better um, ability to find and isolate issues. And I'll get into that in a bit, but what I'm going to show you is if I go here to the engine compartment, you can see that I have these um, lights on with related breakers. Now, if I turn off that, you see that that's off. These are on. That works, but check that out. This one does not go off even if I turn off everything. So you see that there is obviously a error within the electric systems that is causing this to drop and interesting enough you could also see that when the, when that's off when that's still on it's draining battery like crazy inside the workbench if we go to the logic you could see there is a good amount of logic connected to that final breaker down here now of course this breaker itself is now attached to this and presumably it's also attached to another string that is connected to one of these other branches and now it's not able to come off. Again, this same procedure works if you have a area of your boat that's having phantom physics and you don't know where on earth it's coming from, there is a way sort of to isolate and determine where. In the case of the electrical nodes, it's important to have them in this style, meaning one location branches off to each one, rather than connecting this to this to this and kind of continuing on with that spiderweb technique, because then I honestly <laughs> won't be able to help you. I've stopped doing that method because it's caused so many problems for me. But now with this little area here isolated, or with this uh, breaker now knowing that it causes the issue it connects these two so turning the breaker on and off does nothing for us what i tend to do is find a portion of the boat to find our issue and what i like to do is select an area that won't cause it to sink but even if it does you don't have to do it on the actual uh you don't have to do it here you could do it inside a hanger or whatever but if I go ahead and cut this and spawn this part of the boat it still floats which is fine I mean it's useful for us in this case but more importantly I can get access to this room and since my batteries are here I can see now that first of all everything that was draining the batteries like crazy is no longer draining so clearly there is a system in there that's causing issues and preventing us from keeping fully charged batteries like this is ideal right we're even running some lights and it's still not draining like crazy but watch this if i turn that off look at that all of them are actually able to turn off so now we've isolated the problem and we know that it is somewhere on the top half of the vessel so then i'm going to spawn it in again and this time let's select the rear so let's say everything past the Let's just see if it's anything to do with this new area that I've developed, including the ROV and any of this. So if I cut all this off and spawn in, again, it doesn't have to look pretty. It doesn't have to be functional. You're just diagnosing the thing. But if I go in here and turn off the breaker, it works. So you could see that there is, in fact, the problem coming from that rear portion now the other thing to note is that my battery is still draining fast so what is most likely happening is something on this mastery is uh working and causing this now i do shut off my um sonar or radar from working until it's on which is intentional but something else probably some sort of distance sensor or something is still working now it's not draining super fast like it's not going down to 90 already but it's still a little bad now if i turn off some of these systems specifically the electronic system you can see that it's slowed down drastically so there is 
a relationship with the electrical or electronic systems with that drainage. But back to finding what problem is causing the breaker to be kind of connected. So now we know it's in this rear area. Even one more further test, let's just say if it's part of the gantry versus if it's part of the areas around. Now obviously the ROV itself isn't even connected to the vessel, so it shouldn't be causing any issues or shorts. But because it has its own batteries, hmm, most likely actually because it has its own batteries, they're coming in through this. So it very well could be that the ROV itself is causing that issue. If I go back here and turn off the breaker on the ROV itself, now it's off, meaning there is no power going into the ship. Nope, so it's not the ROV. Okay, good to know. Then back to this system, let's delete all of this and keeping only the side walls. I'm going to say it's probably going to be something to do with the gantry, but let's just see what happens in here. Oh, so there you have it. So we've isolated it down even further. And now with that kind of done, you can just go here and see what exactly is connected from this electronic systems into that area that I just had. Now again, me, uh, I don't think it's going to be something to do with the ROV. Oh, I think actually it is. That breaker on the ROV, in fact, doesn't disable the power from communicating with the ship. I'll explain this a sec. So if I turn that off, you can see it's off. So it fully is actually the ROV and it's a design flaw or rather design overlook oversight when these bottom connectors here they attach directly through the um to the batteries there's no way to shut them off so the what what i would have to do is and quite easy fix to be honest i'll just put a little breaker here and this will be charge ROV via connectors. So you could obviously plug it in and charge it via this um, port, but this way it actually lets you plug it in directly to here. And we're gonna plug this into the electronic system. So B to A and this one over to these ones. And then we just have to make sure that these are disconnected from that electronic system. And now, even if this is default on, doesn't matter. But the point is, obviously, you plugging that in will be charging your uh, ROV. Now, there is other sort of areas here that you can get for electronics. But there's also some other things that can be used. And one of them is the electric charger, which actually um, is a one-way charging system. So it doesn't allow you to go from this to the ship, but rather only one way. So I'm actually going to put that down here as well. And it will be attached to our electronic systems. So B, and this is electric out. And this is electric in. So actually, electric in is where this is going. And electric out is where this is going. So if I attach it now to these points, or rather, I can directly put that on this breaker. So even if we have the case where the breaker is on or off or whatever, it will still only transfer electricity one way. So you can see here that the electric charger, the electric out, and the electric in is happening like this, and the electric in is slowly draining, whereas the electric out is fully at one, and it's most likely correlated to the fact that this is slowly draining, so the amount that we have. So we can see here that if this breaker is off, this electric in is zero. If I turn the breaker on, 
it'll start to charge up our ROV. So this now this system now works, and not a bad little system, especially to make this run properly. We can apply the same logic to this portion of the vessel. So if I remove the top half of the antenna array, we could see exactly what kind of effect it has when I turn off this power. So it's, it's dropping much slower, so that instantly tells us that most likely, well, we know now that it's something up on top of this radio array, or mast, that is causing the power to drop off that quickly. When I kind of look at the various things, specifically like the physics sensor, that type of thing, that very well could be causing it. We do know that this pivot is on its own um, breaker, which is intentional or relay. Also, we have other things like the GPS sensor. So all the GPS sensors scattered throughout the boat. There's that. Now these actual velocity pivots themselves, they shouldn't be causing this. But it still is good to determine exactly where it could be coming from. I did a quick trial where I disconnected the physics sensor, where I disconnected the GPS, where I disconnected the cameras, that type of thing, and it did drop a decent amount. Like, let's see, radars are all disconnected, cameras, everything. So now it's just your very basic um, systems. So you can see here how much slower it is dropping. The only downside of this system is now in here, if I turn on my display, it will be wrong. So really, the best way to do this is have your entire ship programmed as such that when you turn that that when you turn on like this display, that this also kicks on those those things. So not like if we flip, flip the cameras here. See, some of them are disconnected. The best way would be to have it toggled. So like when the helm displays are on at that point, then let's say all those systems kick on. The downside to what I have is there's also parts like this screen. So if I turn on my helm, this is still going to show like that. So I know a lot of creators, especially when I was doing the challenge for building the best uh, SAR boat, search and rescue, people had like a main switch that would then enable the breaker. So like it would be here and really that's what I, I should call this, but it comes back all to how much, how many things do I want to change? Because in theory, none of these displays should be able to be on unless this key is on, or I have a second key here for the breaker and then the main key for the ignition and then everything turns on. But for this sort of creation, this is actually much better than some of my other ones that have, I'd say, a lot of issues. This is draining, but it's not draining that slowly that enough that it's going to kind of cause me any type of problems. Something else that can actually help me is I can start migrating my whole system, the compass and the GPS, into the physics sensor. As we know, the physics sensor is a very powerful little unit speed sensor to everything so lots of systems can be migrated to it i'm just curious of how much power that will save down here you could see it even with the gps and that other stuff disconnected it still is draining a decent amount of battery so i wouldn't say that actually helps us at all with draining power and i found the culprit it was actually those two depreciated radars that are up on the roof they're always on, so even though the screens are off, they're technically still on in a sense that they're trying to transmit data to us. So without putting them on a separate circuit, what I could do is determine where on earth these radars even come into play. Most likely it'll be from the main center console, and just like this laser sensor that I have, I can actually make them or put them on the same breaker if I want. Well, actually I can't because this breaker for this is one breaker that is starts when you turn on that system. 
But what I can do is, again, like I said, find where this goes, which microcontroller, and then in here, isolate this microcontroller with whatever button toggles it on, and then just set it to its own little, um, so it's going to touch screen, and then you set it to its own um, circuit or relay. So what I'm going to do is throw on the relay, and we'll put it up here for now. It doesn't really matter. And in theory, it'll just be this one going from this into hot and this into cold. And for the other one, same thing. So this one. Oh, I just disconnected the wrong thing. There we are. And this one goes here. This one goes here. And I know this one turns on now. This is the one that is up on this roof area. So what what will happen is when I turn on the roof array, which is going to be button two here, that is going to turn on that relay. So now it's just a little bit of kind of digging. And to be honest, normally in a vessel that is large and that has less uh, systems, I'm not too concerned, or sorry, has more batteries, same amount of systems, but more batteries. I'm not too concerned with it draining at this rate, but when you do have something that is this size, you really don't want to have it drain the battery on you. So again here, now it goes to the touch screen, it goes to this other stuff, and just have to find out wh which screen it's on, and depending on which screen it is, that's what we're going to set it as the button. So that's the main screen. So it's the same microcontroller except the other uh, channel one. We set that up here. And now it should not drain batteries quickly until those systems are on. Voila. So you have that. And if I go here, turn on my helm, it does show us in the right place. If I turn it off, in theory, that radar is off. If I turn this on, there it is, and that is now off. So it does take a little bit of extra patience and time, and truthfully in smaller vessels and creations it's useless, useful, but in larger ones with massive batteries, I wouldn't even bother changing this. But anyway, there you have it. How to isolate problems, how to solve them, how to kind of go through the steps of fixing something that may not be working properly, and end up with something that is working properly. So thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for more. And as always, happy stormworksing, everyone.